Welcome to the Lead Every Day Show. Our mission is to see a world well-led. And our strategy to get there? To empower leaders like you to lead every day. So let's get to work. Lead Every Day Show family. It's a brand new week here on the podcast, and we are glad that you have joined us for this conversation. We're still on this idea of the, that there's a, a secret that the best teams have, and we've been unpacking it really the last few weeks here as we've thought about some of the some of the things that help us become elite in our performance as, as teams. I, I got it today. I want us to have a conversation about maybe one of the bad words in your organization. What would happen if you made that a good word? We're going to talk about accountability today as we as we jump in. I'm Randy Gravitt. And I'm Mark Miller. And I'm excited about this idea of maybe reframing the idea of accountability. Accountability is so powerful when we have it in place to move the ball down the field. We've been using that language the yeah. last few days. So I think it'll be appropriate yeah. today. Good to see you. New it's week. Good to see you. Yeah, it, it's important. I would take it up a notch and say it's essential. Yeah. The great teams uh, – have embraced accountability. Yeah. They don't. They don't run from it. They yeah. embrace it. Think back to even when we were kids. I mean, just just go back to. You probably don't want to think about this, but when you're in school, would you have ever done the homework? Had the teacher not assigned it and said it's going to be due on Thursday or the spelling test is Friday? You you probably wouldn't even learn to spell. I wouldn't have. It there's just just so much power. And we think about it. We were you know we played some ball during the days and your practices and and coaches holding you accountable and training and all this kind of stuff. And then as you get into your business career and all that, it's accountability. I, I'm just looking back on my life. It has helped me grow so much. i got a long way to go, but I've made a lot of progress because mm -hmm. I knew some – I had to look somebody in the face and say, I either did this or I didn't do this. This was due. This is supposed to happen. Accountability really has been a gift when I look back on it. Yeah, and, and I like to use that language, the gift of accountability. Far too many s people see accountability – as punitive and yeah. as a negative thing. And I believe most people want to be successful. And accountability is one of those levers that helps me do the things that I want to do. And I yeah. think that can be true in your organization as well. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so you've been using this term. I want, I want to dive into this little term, mutual accountability. You, I've heard you talk about that here recently. Yeah. T talk about that, because I think that I think that's relevant to this conversation. Yeah, it really goes back a few weeks when we were talking about role clarity. Uh, some people assume that accountability is the leader's responsibility. And I would say not in the best teams, not in the best organizations. I mean, certainly the, the leader is ultimately accountable. But day to day, you want the team to assume the responsibility of holding each other accountable, yeah. mutual accountability. I've heard you say this before, that yeah. in the great... I was going to say that. Well, go ahead, say it. Well, I'll I say mean, it for I, you. I've, I've spent some time in some professional sports teams, and, and it's amazing when you get in the best of the best environments, they police their own locker room. I mean, right. there's really... The coaches don't have to be present for... For it to be buttoned up and people are locked in on what they're supposed to be right. doing. Right, there's mutual accountability. There, there, there's mutual accountability. They're not, they're not looking to the coach or the GM yeah. to provide accountability. Yeah. And in the best organizations, if, if you and I are on a team – and I didn't do my action items, yeah. you don't need to go tell the leader. You <laughs> exactly. need to ask me why yeah. I didn't do my action yeah, items. Exactly. And, and exactly. that's healthy, and I think that's what the well, best I think the higher up you go in, a, in an organization, the more you should just uh, – uh, uh, it's dangerous to assume, but you you got to assume people are going to take accountability for their actions at that point. We talk about accepting responsibility all the time, but if you can't trust each other to do what you say you're going to do, that, that's a problem. But there needs to be a call out if that doesn't happen. It's, right. it's exactly what you're saying. He's like, hey, right. what's up, man? We're, we're trying to do something great here. You got yeah. to do what you're supposed to be. And then and then we need to be able to move past that and not hold a grudge for eight sure. years. I mean, sure. I'm I really leaders, trying to get better. Yeah, and leaders can set that expectation. I have told teams over the years, I said, I want you to have the confidence in me that you can stake your life on me doing my action items. Yeah. And I said, and I want to be able to stake my life on you doing your action items. Yeah. All of a sudden, people go, I think he's serious. I said, yes, <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. Yeah. Let's do this together. And, and I love saying to that person, like when you start with that, I know you would, you would say this, is like, if I don't do them, you have full of opportunity to hold me accountable sure. I mean, to, and to call me out. I sure. mean, even if you're the leader. Sure. It's great. And, and even calling people out. I think the way that happens is you say, hey, Randy, I noticed you didn't get your action items yeah. done. How can I help? Yeah. How can we help? Yeah. Oh, by the way, give me a new date 
Right. So all of a sudden, you know this right. you is not going to go away. Can, like you're kicking the candle Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, when, when can you get this done? Yeah, what kind of help do you need? And now you do that two or three times, right. then we got to have a different conversation. Yeah. Um, in fact, I was on a team years ago that the team, back to the point of mutual accountability, uh, confronted a team member in the meeting. I didn't even know this was going to happen. And they said, we noticed that you've uh, developed the habit of not doing your action items. <laughs> and they said, we need to know, is this a character issue or a competence issue? Yeah. Now, as the leader watching this, I was so proud yeah. because the team didn't come to me and say, this person is not doing their action items. They called him out. They're busting. And said, we're going to talk good. about this. Now, I will say, let me tell you how that story ended. He left. Hmm. He quit the organization because it was a character issue. Yeah. And he had found himself in an environment where he was going to be held accountable. And now, by the way, he quit in an organization that had 96% retention year over year for decades. Right. It was a character issue. And the team called that out. They policed their own locker room. That's yeah. pretty cool when that happens. Yeah, I love that. So what would you say to the to the leader who who is in an organization right now where it is a punitive thing? It's it, like how do you switch it up? How do you how do you I'm gonna play QA here with you. How do you change it from from being a negative thing to a positive thing? Is there a way to reinvent there? Well, I've actually said that uh, accountability needs to hire a great PR and marketing firm to, to kind of do <laughs> it's some gotten a bad rebranding. Name, I don't it's know gotten a bad name. Yeah. I think the leader has to to talk with people about the vision yeah. and the opportunity yeah. and, and what we get if we'll embrace this together. I think it begins with some vision casting. Yeah. I think you've got to quickly follow that with some role modeling. You won't, you, you won't go far if you're the leader advocating the gift of accountability and you don't do the things that you say you're going to do. Yeah. People always watch the leader. That's so you got to model it. Yeah, that's good. I, I'll, I'll connect a little dot here for us too. Remember a couple of weeks ago we talked about top talent. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes we're worried if we ask somebody, if we hold them accountable, they're going to they're gonna pull back. Actually, top talent, what, what the research showed was when you hold them accountable, they actually love that. They, they, they lean in. They're going to get better. They're going to they're gonna change if they need to. A lot of times you don't have to hold them accountable. They're already performing at a really high level. But if they're not, they don't mind being held to, to the standard if, as long as they know everybody's leaned in together like you're talking mm -hmm. about. So I think that's a huge opportunity for us to – Connect some dots yeah. here as yeah. well. So this, All right. this accountability, you got you got another thought? Well, I, I, it's kind of a, a story that has helped me think about this. And somebody shared this with me, and I, I, I'm surprised that it has stuck with me all these years. They asked me, what's the most important part of a kite? Well, I'm sitting there <laughs> going, well, a kite doesn't have that many parts, and – I, I didn't even know what I said, the tail. And they said, wrong. And I said, the other part that's held up by the sticks. <laughs> but I, mean, I don't know what it's sail. called. I don't know what you <laughs> the call sail, it. The tail, and they the said, sail. no. And I said, how about the sticks? And I'm, mm. I'm naming all, I can't even think of any more parts to a kite. I've named, yeah. even though I didn't know the proper terms, I've named everything about the kite. They said, no, 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 no. They said, no kite can fly without the string. Yeah. You forgot the part you knew about. <laughs> Being tethered to the ground. Yeah. It's the accountability to the ground yeah. that enables the kite to soar. So if you don't believe it, you get one up in the air and you cut the string. What's going to what happen? Happens. It's going to break. It's going to crash. Yeah, it's going to crash. It's going to crash. And they said, so we need to provide the string so that the people around us can soar. Yeah, I love that. And I just, ever since I heard that, I went, you know, the most important part of a kite is the string. Isn't that, that interesting? That's so good. I, I don't know that I can put a bow on that any better than that's so good here's what i would ask you today how is accountability perceived viewed talked about in your organization maybe it's time for you to reinvent that to to move it from punitive to a gift it really can be the the mechanism to help your people soar that'd be really cool we're going to continue the conversation tomorrow we're going to we're going to shift over and talk about meetings which we think are really one of the most important skills that your team can have I think, I think uh, leaders everywhere are going to benefit from this episode tomorrow. I hope you'll join us for that. Remember, the best leaders lead every day.